Democrat supporters of Joe Biden are launching a write-in campaign as a creative way to make sure he wins the primary, despite his name not being on the ballot and, in my view, totally dissing New Hampshire. Longshot candidate and our next guest, currently sitting Congressman Dean Phillips, ripping into the DNC over the move as he fuels speculation about a potential third-party run should this not work. Democratic presidential candidate Congressman Dean Phillips on the couch. Great to see you, Congressman. Good to see you, my person. friend. Congratulations on your private sector success. Thank you. And like the founding fathers put it out, now it's time to serve the country. That's what you're doing. Your decision to jump in. You knew there was a problem with the sitting president. Mm -hmm. You were out doing the Sunday shows about two months ago. Right. Why are you in and not somebody that you're supporting? Well, I'll tell you, I, I lost my father in Vietnam. I'm a gold star son. What, he was one of one million Americans who gave their lives to this country. And I thought, here I am, a member of Congress. I see this train wreck occurring, and someone's got to say the quiet part out loud. All I am is telling the truth. The same thing everybody in Washington talks about quietly, behind closed doors. They get in front of TV cameras, and it's a totally different ballgame. By the way, on both sides of the aisle, someone has to practice democracy. And if not me, who? And if not now, when? I try to get others to enter this race right. and they're sheepish they don't have the courage to meet the moment they'd rather wait until it's their turn and that's the problem in politics you know it's never been a, a problem before Jimmy Carter uh, Jimmy Carter was president and Ted Kennedy after four years Ted Kennedy goes I'm, I'd be better what? ran against him Ronald Reagan says Gerald Ford's president I'm a Republican but I'm gonna run against a sitting president why is it a problem now that's what I'm trying to understand. Competition makes this country better. That's what makes us different in politics, in our economy. Makes better outcomes, better value, and same thing here. I don't understand. Well, I do understand. Most people in Washington simply wish to stick around for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you don't want to do anything to get out of line. This is not my career. I did this to serve my country. I'm going to do it now to serve my country. But if you voted with the president almost everything, how would you be different besides being younger? Well, massively different. First of all, I'm a business person. There are very few people in Congress who are. And the, the president did some good investments in America, the CHIPS Act, the infrastructure bill. I really celebrate that. But we've got to invest in Americans. Health care, out of control expenses, housing, we need to build seven, house, seven million houses in America. Education, unaffordable. And food and fuel. I'm talking to New Hampshire voters every single day who are desperate for help. And the government is not listening. And by the way, I've got a lot of center left ideas. I've got a lot of center right ideas. What are they? Fiscal responsibility. Our southern border is a disaster. I'm a Democrat telling you. I've been there twice. I've seen it. Someone has got to get it under control. So the president goes, give me money. I ask for money. But it's not about money, is it's it? It's a policy. It, it's the enforcement of policy. And by the way, I think we have to change our asylum policy. It is not serving this country. Democrats know it. Republicans know it. The lack of leadership and the willingness to be bold because you're afraid of losing an election is why we're in this position. Why does the president have 33 percent approval rating? I think most of America knows this. By the way, look at Donald Trump and Joe Biden are both men who are going to be in their 80s. There was a Time magazine cover years ago with Bob Dole. Big headline, 72 years old. Is he too old to be president? Right. I mean, come on, everybody. I'm just saying the quiet part out loud. It's time for a new generation of young conservatives you just and think, but young But do you think he's slipping? Do you think he's an old idiot? I look at John Kerry. Whatever you think of John Kerry, I don't look at him and say he can't do the job. Whatever you look at, look at Senator Grassley. You look at him and say, wow, he's too old. I really don't see him as too old. But there's something about this president and his performance, his unwillingness to do interviews and press conferences. I think Joe Biden's a good man, but to your point, he's not standing in front of the press. He's not here meeting voters. He's not answering questions. He's not doing town halls, and he won't do debates. I think he's a good man. I don't think he has a cognitive issue, but he's eight, he's 81 years old. He's in decline. And by the way, we've got issues coming down the pipeline. You know, artificial intelligence. We have wars in the Middle East and Europe. We've got a southern border that's a disaster, and costs are out of control. We need new leadership. That's what this is about. More. So, than if, if you know, you you put two point. They say 2.4 million into New Hampshire, mm -hmm. more than Pete Buttigieg did last time. Mm -hmm. You're going to go on to South Carolina, regardless. Darn right. In All fact, right. we started at zero. 0% 10 weeks ago. Last tracking poll yesterday, 32%. People want change. In practicality, yeah. if it doesn't look like you have a pathway and you lose by 40 points to a writing candidate that doesn't even want any part of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Would you? What are the chances of you joining No Labels if you're interested? If they're interested in you, are you interested in them? I'm interested. I'm a Democrat. I've been a lifelong Democrat. I want to help. There are my Democrats party. with New Labels. Oh, I know. I know there, and there are Republicans with No Labels. I am on a mission to defeat Donald Trump. I really do believe he's dangerous for this country. I have great admiration for principled conservatives. I think Donald Trump is dangerous. I'm a Democrat. I'm going to run as a Democrat, and I'm going to win as a Democrat. Well,
is what's more dangerous, the way he enforced the border or the tax cuts? Hey, I'm talking about the man. Look, at there's some policies of Donald Trump's that I actually support. I think his Abraham Accords in the Middle East, I think that's a historic legacy. I think his focus on the border was important. I don't think the policy was everything we needed. That's the problem. Let's be common sense. Look, I, I like Democrats. I like Republicans. In fact, I love all Americans. Let's stop the nonsense, sit at tables, find solutions to problems, and stop the partisan BS. Joe Manchin said there was no pathway for him to run for president. He might go to no labels. Do you feel the same way? Look, at every business success I had was a long shot. And I know this is too. I'm going to be relentless. I'm going to be resolute. And I'm going to do what my country needs. I don't care what both parties say and what mine does. Got to keep going. All right, by the way, he does not find New Hampshire cold. He's from Minnesota. No, this is, I'm he actually warm. Believe, he can't believe we're even complaining. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Great to friend. see you in person. Well. All right, you too. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.